of British relations. After Margaret Thatcher reached a deal with the Chinese on the return of Hong Kong, a local reporter took the Iron Lady to task. You signed an agreement with China promising to deliver over five million people into a, the hands of a communist dictatorship. Thatcher claimed mostly everyone in Hong Kong was happy with the deal and told Emily Lau. You may be a solitary exception. So what do you make of that answer today in 2022? Many of the journalists who subsequently stood up, they asked similar questions. So even in that room, I wasn't a solitary exception. July 1, 2022 marks exactly halfway through 50 years of the one country, two systems autonomy Beijing promised to Hong Kong at the 1997 handover. It aims to preserve the city's freedoms of expression and assembly, as well as its institutions, including an independent judiciary. But in the wake of the 2019 protests, pressure on the city's freedoms intensified thanks to a new national security law. Supporters say the law ended the chaos of 2019 and restored order, but it did more than that. Scenes of mass protests like this are no more. At least 186 people have been arrested under the law, including a 90-year-old Catholic cardinal. The opposition is virtually wiped out with many of the city's pro-democracy figures in jail or exile. Politically charged artworks like the Pillar of Shame Tiananmen Memorial have been removed. Dozens of civil society groups, including the city's largest independent trade union, have disbanded. And national security investigations have led to the shuttering of news outlets like the Apple Daily. When asked about charges of diminished freedoms, a Hong Kong government spokesman told CNN, many freedoms and rights are not absolute and can be restricted for reasons including protection of national security and public safety. So as former security chief John Lee prepares to lead the city from July 1, what is left of Hong Kong's promised autonomy? We have autonomy in religion, in education, in media, including social media, in the internet, in how we manage our civil service. The second system is still here. It is functioning. It's under stress. We want one Hong Kong to be free. Lao has always been a skeptic of one country, two systems, as a reporter, a lawmaker, and former chair of the Democratic Party. I will not say that one country, two system is completely finished. The fact that I can stand here in the Democratic Party office to talk to you shows there's some freedom. And, uh, and there are some differences, but they are getting less and less. Lao says she is staying in the city to support her friends and colleagues in prison, abiding by her mantra, be bold, be wise, and be careful. Christy Lustout, CNN, Hong Kong.